Hello student, welcome to physics lesson 1 for SS3 under the topic models of the atom. We'll be looking at various models of the atom, atomic structure and chemical behavior, evaluation and assignment. John Dalton is credited as the father of the atomic theory. Now he has the first history of recorded study of the structure of the atom, though the early Greek philosophers were the originators of this concept. In his own model, he considered the atom as constituting the simplest component of matter. Now he viewed this atom as indestructible, very tiny heart sphere. So as tiny as the atom way according to his model these atoms cannot be destroyed okay the discovery of radioactivity by becquerel made the atom looks complex rather than indestructible or indivisible now this radioactivity actually showed that atoms can disintegrate into different elements okay this discovery of cathode rays in electric discharge tubes by Williams Crookes also revealed that negatively charged electrons were component of the atom, meaning that what Dalton said that atom is indestructible was countered by the discovery of radioactivity and cathode ray using the discharge tube. Okay, now the, this neutrality means that they must exist within the atom, positively charged components, to balance the negatively charged electrons. Now, though these atoms were seen to have electrons by Crookes, according to his studies, these atoms remained neutral, okay, meaning that if it is negative in terms of the electronic charges or in terms of charges, there must be the same number of oppositely or opposite positive charges which will make such atoms to be balanced. So that was what Crookes, William Crookes, came up with. Okay, now this led Sir J.J. Thompson to propose that atom is an homogeneous sphere of positively charged of positive charge inside of which are embedded or surrounded by negatively charged electrons rutherford model that is the idea of nuclear and planetary model Rutherford contradicted Thomson's model by redirecting a beam or by directing a beam of positively charged alpha particles at a thin sheet of metal foil. Now it was found out that most of the alpha particles pass through the foil without deflection as if the foil were empty space. Only a few were diverted. Some actually bounced back in the same path. So this led to scattering. Some passing through, some rebouncing, some moving away in different directions. Okay, this scattering of the alpha particles by the metal foil was explained as a repulsion from a heavy positively charged nucleus present at the center of the atom. All right? Rutherford proposed that the atom consists of positively charged heavy core called the nucleus where most of the mass of the atom was concentrated. Now the reason he said the nucleus is positively charged was because of the scattering of the alpha particles by this metal foil. Remember we said some actually pass through, some reflected back in the same direction and some moved away in different direction so that scattering brought the notion that 
atom consists of a positively charged heavy central particle called the nucleus by Rutherford. Now he further said that around this nucleus negatively charged electron circles in orbit. Okay? Negatively charged electron circles in orbit. This discovery by Rutherford was a major breakthrough though it had its difficulties. The first difficulty was that it predicts that light of continuous range of frequency will be emitted whereas experiment shows line spectra now rutherford actually predicted a continuous spectrum of light but further experiment countered that and showed us line spectra the second was that it predicted that atoms are unstable electrons quickly spiral into the nucleus but we know in present days that atoms in general are stable since the matter around us are stable. Okay, let's look at the model of Bohr. Bohr came up with the model we know as the quantized energy model. In this model, he suggests of hydrogen atomic model were as follows that the electrons moved around the nucleus in certain specific circular orbits and he called that energy level and that the centrifugal force due to this motion counterbalances the electrostatic attraction between the electron and the nucleus now if the electrons were found by him to cycle around the heavy nucleus. Now this motion which is balanced by the centrifugal force, a force that keeps an object oscillating around in a circular path, is counterbalanced by the electrostatic attraction between the electron and the nucleus too. The energy of the electron in an atom cannot vary continuously but is restricted to a limited number of discrete or individual level. Now what this means is that each electron in a certain orbit has its own specific or discrete energy, not a continuous energy. Okay, So this energy of the electron is said to be quantized in Bohr's atomic model. Now his postulation that light is emitted or he postulated that light is emitted only when electron jumps from one stationary state to another of lower energy. When such jump occurs a single photon of light, this single photon actually refers to energy, is emitted whose energy is given by hf equals to e subscript u minus e subscript l the h there refers to the Planck's constant the e u represents the upper energy state while the e l represents the lower energy state the f there is the frequency of the emitted photon of light Okay, all right, so we have what Bohr was talking about the, the electron outside, the nucleus is positive, and then we have the shell, electronic shell, or the orbit. That diagram there shows what Bohr found out after studying the hydrogen atom. Thus, Bohr was able to account for the appearance of line spectrum rather than the continuous spectrum. Okay, so that those two diagrams shows an electron absorbs energy when it transfers to a higher energy level. And we call that excitation. So when it is dropping from the higher energy level to a lower energy level as we see, in the second diagram it will emit a photon of light okay 
it will emit a photon of light which is which whose energy rather is given by hf equals to e u minus e l okay three that the angular momentum values of the electron in an atom are quantized that is they are restricted to a limited number of discrete values that are integral numbers of a constant the Planck's constant given as h equals to 6.626 times 10 to the power minus 34 joules second divided by 2 pi so we have that the angular momentum L is given as n, which is the integral multiple of a constant, divide or times the Planck's constant divided by 2 pi, with the n they represent integral. And the integer n is called the quantum number of the electron. Now, this theory met with limited success. The introduction of the quantum numbers and fixed energy levels were important steps forward. Bohr explained only the spectra of hydrogen. So, since hydrogen is not the only element we have, the model actually met some difficulties in trying to use it to explain the atomic of other elements, at atoms of other elements that are actually complex. So this made use of more complex models. Okay, what we are actually using today is called the electron cloud model. This model visualizes an electron as constituting Sorry, an atom as constituting of a nucleus of radius of the order of 10 raised to power minus 15 meters. The electron is visualized as being in rapid motion within a relatively large region around the nucleus. Now, this electron is also considered as a particle or wave with a specific energy having only a certain probability of a region in the space outside the nucleus now if you look at that statement it also backs up what bored it the quantum state the, or the quantum energy of electrons as proposed by Bohr only that this electron cloud saw the electrons as waves okay revolving around this central nucleus okay the electron is visualized as spread out around the nucleus in a sort of electron cloud the cloud being dense in regions of high electron probability and more diffuse in regions of low probability okay we can see that in the diagram there where we have close to the nucleus the nucleus is represented by the blue circle there with a positive sign at the middle now quite close to the nucleus we have dense electron cloud okay then away or farther away from the nucleus we have less dense electron cloud you can see the dots there representing the electrons quite spaced okay and then we have the thin shell which is actually the electronic shell okay this figure the figure we just saw they illustrate the electron density distribution of the electron cloud raised the positive nucleus okay we move straight to atomic structure and chemical behavior atom is con taking up of a tiny but massive nucleus of at the center and outside the nucleus is a cloud of electrons which move in wave-like orbits 
or shells around the nucleus. So the modern atomic structure we are using is actually the electron cloud model. Okay. This nucleus consists of protons which carry positive charges and neutrons which carry no charge. The proton and neutron constitute what we know as the nucleon. Okay. Practically, the mass of the atom is concentrated in the central nucleus. The protons, neutrons, and electrons are subatomic particles of the atom. Okay, let's look at electron. The electron is the lightest particle of the atom with a mass Me of 9.1 times 10 raised to power minus 31 kilogram and an atomic charge of 1.6 times 10 raised to power minus 19 coulomb. The proton also has a mass of 1.67 times 10 to the power minus 27 kilograms. Now if you look at that, we see that the proton is of a greater mass than the electron. Now the proton carries a positive charge E raised to power plus E plus, which is also the same in value as the electronic charge, which is 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. All right, so E plus equals to E minus, which has the value of 1.6 times 10 raised to the power minus 19 coulomb. The neutron has the same mass as the proton. Remember in the nucleus of an element of the atom we have the proton and the neutron inside the nucleus. So the nucleus, sorry, the neutrons have the same mass as the protons but carries no charge. So the charge of the nucleus is actually contributed by the proton only. Okay? Then the atom of an element X, for instance, is represented as XAZ, where A is the mass number and Z is the atomic number. The atomic number of the protons in sorry the atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus of an element whereas the mass number or the mass or nucleon number is the total number of the total number of the sorry about that the mass or nucleon number is the total number of the neutrons and protons in an atom of the element. Thus, the number of neutrons in the atom of an elect element equals the difference between the mass number and the atomic number. Please take note of that. All right, before we go into the evaluation and assignment, please, this lesson, as you are listening to it and watching the video, you can pause to listen to it again and again, and you are also expected to write down the notes as you have in the slides there. The notes will be checked immediately. We resume schools, and the assignment that you have there should be done inside your notebook as this will also be checked thank you okay here we have defined the terms atomic number mass number nucleon isotopes and valence electrons number two what is the essential features of the electro electron cloud model of the atom then you are to illustrate this with a diagram. Okay, thank you very much for your time.
and stay safe till we meet again next week. Bye bye.